these very short bursts have the potential and show the effectiveness in improving your fitness. Hey, you've heard me talk about micro workouts frequently, and I've called them the greatest breakthrough in the fitness industry in decades. I'm so excited about the uh, acceptance of demystifying and decomplexifying the act of performing a workout and making it accessible and convenient for anyone, anytime to engage in these brief bouts of physical effort, which have so many wonderful health and fitness attributes. And now research is backing up my excitement that this is indeed a highly effective strategy for health, fitness, disease prevention, and a wonderful, refreshing revolution in the fitness industry, which by and large, I contend today, uh, is fraught with programming that is too complex, overly stressful, and exhausting to many participants. So I'm talking about the offerings at the fitness facility, the protocol delivered by most personal trainers, uh, the group exercise programs where people are training for extremely grueling endurance events and pushing themselves really hard. And when they do go to the gym at, or out on the road, it's certainly better than uh, sitting at home and not moving. But I think there's this in-between uh, chasm where people are uh, all or nothing approach to fitness. And this was best seen during the pandemic when the fitness facilities closed and uh, left and right, we were hearing people blame the lack of access to formal workouts uh, as a cause for getting out of shape. And to me, it was quite um, ridiculous to think because anywhere, anytime, we have opportunities for fitness and that's where micro workouts come in. So this uh, research that was published in Exercise and Sports Science Reviews, they called micro workouts exercise snacks, which is a cute title as well. I prefer micro workouts, uh, but they're going to be referenced as I read through the study, uh, these exercise snacks. So... The study uh, starts out with the obvious assertion that low cardio respi respiratory fitness and sedentary behavior uh, is a huge <laughs> independent risk factor for all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease risks. Uh, everyone knows this. It's widely recognized. And individuals who fail to meet current physical activity guidelines often do so because of perceived lack of time and barriers accessing equipment and facilities. So it's a great presentation to start the study that we have a huge problem here where the act of being healthy active and fit is too complex and daunting uh, for many people. It's a real thing. They do not have time to get in the car, drive to the parking lot, find a space, walk into the gym, the crowded gym, uh, punch their card or beat their smartphone, go get a spot on the mat and do an hour workout, get back in the car, drive home. Uh, there are a lot of factors that are uh, pushing that away from top priority for many people. So uh, we are going into study the benefits, the the amazing benefits of exercise snacks. These are less than one minute duration bouts of vigorous exercise performed periodically throughout the day. We hypothesize that the snacks are feasible, well-tolerated, and time efficient. In other words, anybody can freaking do it. No excuses. Uh, so here's the key points of the, um, the, the study of exercise snacks is that first, this perceived lack of time uh, and access to facilities is a huge problem for many people in getting physically fit. Second, that when you do engage in these brief bouts lasting less Less than one minute, they are well tolerated. They're not too, <laughs> they're not too daunting or too fatiguing for someone to kind of spin out and not be able to adhere to a recommendation. Um, the proof of concept studies show uh, amazing improvements in cardiorespiratory fitness as well as cardiometabolic health, especially in previously inactive adults. Um, and these can happen with the protocols they use, which were uh, cycling on a stationary bike or even just ascending a staircase. Uh, and they did a good job uh, making it accessible uh, with, with the, um, the study protocols such that all you need 
is a, a flight of stairs if you don't have a stationary bike sitting there. And of course, we can uh, engage in uh, other activities, even if you don't have a staircase, such as uh, my common examples of hitting the deck for um, it, some uh, push-ups, uh, standing and doing some squats uh, onto a chair and back up in your cubicle, or making the reasonable investment of putting a pull-up bar in your space or a kettlebell or a mini band to stretch and uh, go down uh, the hall with um, some uh, mini band exercises. Anything can uh, bring about a wonderful uh, miniature workout lasting less than one minute that's um, strenuous enough to prompt these great fitness responses. So um, the one of the protocols they, they studied uh, was the uh, three isolated 20 second all out cycling sprints performed one to four hours apart. So the study group did this for six weeks. There were 12 inactive adults jumping into the study and they improved their performance by uh, between four and 9%. So they got quite a bit fitter from doing, again, three times 20 second sprints, performed one to four hours apart. So it was basically, imagine an office workplace environment where there's a couple stationary bikes set up in the corner room, and they ask you to show up three times a day, uh, a little bit of warm up. So there was two minute warm up, one minute cool down. So it did take three minutes of their valuable time to go and bang out a sprint. And this is the exact protocol that is the centerpiece of the uh, Carol bike that I've used for many years, the C-A-R-O-L fit.ai or carolfitai.com is the website and they have the um, uh, optimized logic bike, the artificial intelligence bike that learns how fit you are and applies that amount of resistance. But their bread and butter workout is an eight minute session where you do two 20 second all out sprints and go for maximum wattage output. It's very difficult and strenuous. I can't even do it more than uh, once in a while because you really uh, lay it out there in 20 seconds and the fitness and the health and the metabolic benefits are tremendous. And they have a lot of research on their website saying this eight minute workout workout can indeed dramatically improve your fitness with such a short session. Uh, so the results from this study, if, especially with inactive adults, again, everything's going to be extreme and dramatic when you're talking about unfit people. But isn't that nice to know that those who are less fit stand to benefit more than any other population. So it's not an excuse anymore to say, oh, I'm, I'm so out of shape, I can't, uh, I can't even begin. It's, that's where you're going to get the, the greatest improvement curve compared to someone who's already quite fit and is trying for incremental gains. These results suggest that the vigorous nature of these protocols are a more important adaptive stimulus than performing successive bouts of fatiguing exercise within a short period. AKA, guess what that sounds like? That's right, HIT, high intensity interval training, fatiguing, uh, successive bouts of fatiguing exercise within a short period. In support of this supposition, an isolated 10 second sprint is sufficient to alter the concentration of intramuscular metabolites. And a 30 second sprint activates key intracellular signaling cascades involved in mediating training adaptation. Uh, they call it AMP, activated protein kinase. So in non-science speak, what they're saying is that just these very short bursts have the potential and show the effectiveness in improving your fitness. It does not have to be an exhausting hit regimen. Uh, they contend it's more important. And I would say part of that reason is because it's not fatiguing. It doesn't have those risks of adverse effects. <laughs> Nothing bad is going to happen to you if you jump on a bike and sprint for 20 seconds uh, a few times a day. Uh, Cardiorespiratory fitness gains using the exercise snacks approach do not even require all-out efforts, and um, you can easily uh, throw in something that's maybe not as uh, hardcore as the Carroll protocol, where they're asking you to really sprint to your maximum ability, uh, and that's why they used the staircase uh, protocol that can be easily implemented in home, school, or office-based setting. You don't even need a bike. So this is um, vigorous stair-based exercise snacks lasting between 
15 to 30 seconds, uh, breaking up a period of time, uh, a total time of nine hours of sitting. So we're talking about a daily workday where the study subjects went on the hour and climbed a couple staircases and then went back to work. So just by doing that, they significantly reduce the area under the curve for insulin by around 17% and non-sterified fatty acids by 21%. And these were, again, unfit adults who were overweight, had metabolic health problems. And so reduce, reducing the area under the curve for insulin, that is the reducing the overall insulin production uh, over the course of the day or the course of the study. This is a huge result. Um, you've heard Dr. Peter Atia talk about this, I think on my first podcast interview with him. Um, he, he says that uh, insulin area under the curve is the single best measurement for metabolic health and uh, protecting against disease is that getting that chronically excessive insulin production down and reducing it by seven by 21 percent no excuse me 17 percent in a short study is a pretty awesome result um they didn't even do warm up and cool down they just had the people get up from their desk and climb up the stairs lasting 15 to 30 seconds you'd hope that would be a couple few flights but someone who's really unfit Maybe it takes 15 seconds to climb up one floor. Um, there was also another study where um, eight hours of continuous sitting was compared with a, uh, a study group that performed five times four second cycling sprints. Four seconds of sprinting. Is that too much to ask? We're just lowering the bar down to where anybody can do this. Uh, go get yourself a stationary bike or go get yourself a staircase and do a set of five times four seconds on the hour. So this was a workday, again, an eight-hour workday where they got up and took I guess it would take less than one minute to do five times four seconds with some good recovery. What happened to these people? Uh, breaking up the sitting with hourly sprints resulted in a 31% reduction in postprandial plasma triglycerides and a 43% increase in fat oxidation after a high fat meal. Whew. Okay, so your metabolic health improves dramatically just by getting off your butt once an hour for doing four second sprints. Um, we also note in these studies, they talk about uh, two different things, cardiorespiratory health, that's what we consider to be cardio, and also the uh, problem of localized cardiovascular dysfunction. And this was first brought to my attention in my interviews with Katie Bowman that you can see on the Primal Endurance Mastery course. And I believe we can talk about it in our podcast interviews as well, where you can be a cardiovascularly fit specimen, but have poor overall cardiovascular health because prolonged sitting can cause cardio cardiovascular dysfunction, reducing leg blood flow and shear stress factors implicated in endothelial dysfunction and the pathogenesis of cardiovascular disease. That means if you do your uh, 30 miles a week of running and you can pop up some good times for a 10K or a half marathon, but you sit with your legs bent on a chair for eight hours a day, you can have hardening of the arteries behind your knee where you are bending these arteries all day long into a chair. That's kind of it's kind of scary. Um, so these exercise snacks can help improve vascular function during extended periods of sitting. 10 healthy males who sit eight and a half hours a day, um, they had, uh, the protocol was for them to get up and ascend three flights of stairs at a brisk speed uh, on the hour. Again, so uh, just getting up from your desk, setting a timer and banging some stairs every hour results. 32% higher blood flow and vascular conductance and a 15% increase in shear rate in these problematic areas of the legs that can get screwed up even in fit people when you're sitting at a desk too long. So uh, getting to the conclusion here, exercise snacks, Brad calls them micro workouts, may be additionally attractive if geared toward improving muscular strength and endurance. Uh, these people did a study protocol for uh, around a month where they did two daily bouts of body weight exercise uh, consisting of five times one minute of maximum repetition. So let's say uh, pull-ups to failure in a minute time, just five times one minute of doing body weight exercise. 
uh, or stair climbing. They improve fiber-specific satellite cell content and myonuclei number, as well as indices of capillarization in patients with coronary artery disease. <laughs> oh, that's fun to read all the scientific terms, but basically these people got fit by doing something as simple as five times one minute body weight exercise. This is a this exercise snacks conclusion from numerous studies, they represent a feasible, well-tolerated, time-efficient strategy to simultaneously improve cardiorespiratory fitness and reduce the detrimental impact of prolonged sedentary, sedentary behavior on cardiometabolic health. And yes, that includes you and I and everyone else who's cardiovascularly fit, but might have signs of poor cardiometabolic health. Get up and move on the hour and you will have spectacular results. Thank you so much for watching, listening. That's some cool science right there, validating the awesome benefits of micro workouts.